In 1912, six people were killed with an axe in the town of Aliska, Iowa. The victims included six children, and all of them had severe head wounds. Investigators tried to find the person responsible for the murders, but they were never able to solve the crime. On June 9, 1912, the Moore family consisted of parents Josiah B., 43 years old, Sarah, 39 years old, and their four children, Herman Montgomery, 11 years old, Mary Catherine, 10 years old, Arthur Boyd, 7 years old, and Paul Vernon, 5 years old. An affluent family, the Moors were well-known and well-liked in their community. That evening, the visiting girls Ina May, 8 years old, and Lena Gertrude Stillinger, 12 years old, attended the Presbyterian Church where they participated in the Children's Day program, which Sarah had coordinated. After the program ended at 9.30 p.m., the Morse and the Stillinger sisters walked to the Morse house, arriving between 9.45 and 10 p.m. At 7 a.m. on June 10th, Mary Peckham, the Moore family's neighbor, became concerned after she noticed that the family had not come out to do their morning chores. Peckham knocked on the Moore's door, but when nobody answered, she tried to open it. Peckham found that the door was locked, so she let the Moore's chickens out and called Ross Moore, Josiah's brother. Like Peckham, Moore received no response when he knocked on the door and shouted. Ross unlocked the front door with his copy of the house key. Moore then went into the parlor and opened the guest bedroom door, where he found Ina and Lena Stillinger's bodies on the bed. Moore immediately told Peckham to call Henry Hank Horton, the Liska's primary peace officer, who arrived shortly thereafter. Horton's search of the house revealed that the entire Moore family and the two Stillinger girls had been bludgeoned to death. The murder weapon, an axe belonging to Josiah, was found in the guest room where the Stillinger sisters were found. The murders happened between midnight and 5 a.m., according to the doctors. Two cigarettes that were left in the attic suggest that the killer or killers patiently waited there until the Moore family and the Stillinger guests were asleep. The killers began in the master bedroom, where Josiah and Sarah Moore were sleeping. Josiah received more blows from the axe than any other victim. His face had been cut to such an extent that his eyes were missing. The ceiling in his room also had a gouge mark from when the murderer lifted the axe to murder him. The killer or killers used the axe to kill Sarah, Herman, Mary Catherine, Arthur, and Paul. They then used the blunt end of the axe on the other victims. The murderer went back to the master bedroom to kill the more parents, knocking over a shoe that had filled with blood. They then went to the guest bedroom and killed Ina and Lena. After the murders, investigators found untouched food and bloody water. They let people in to see if they could have committed the crime, which made the crime seem contaminated. Investigators believed that all of the other victims were asleep when they were killed, except for Lena Stillinger. They think that she was awake and was fighting back, as she was found with a defensive wound on her arm. Her nightgown was pulled up to her waist, which led to speculation that the killers sexually assaulted her or tried to do so. Many people were suspected of the murder, including Reverend George Kelly, Frank F. Jones, William Mansfield, Loving Mitchell, Paul Mueller, and Henry Lee Moore, no relation. Reverend Kelly was tried twice for the murder, and the first trial ended in a hung jury. The second trial ended in an acquittal. Other people who were investigated for the murder were also cleared. Andrew Sawyer was one of the people who was questioned about the murders. He was not charged, and investigators think that he may have been obsessed with the murders. He also slept with clothes on, as if he was planning to run away if necessary. Reverend George Kelly was a minister who lived in town at the time of the murders. He was described as being strange and having had a mental breakdown in the past. He was accused of peeping and asking young women and girls to take off their clothes for him. On June 8, 1912, Reverend Kelly came to give Children's Day services at the Moore home. He left town between the hours of 5 a.m. and 5.50 a.m. on June 10, 1912, the same day the Moore family's bodies were discovered. Reverend Kelly had confessed to the murders in court, but the jury did not believe his confession. Reverend Kelly became very interested in the murder case after hearing about it. He wrote many letters to the police, investigators, and family members, sharing information that he thought might help solve the case. 
This made people suspicious, so a private investigator wrote back to Reverend Kelly asking for more information. Reverend Kelly replied with detailed information about what he had heard and seen during the murders. His mental illness made it difficult for authorities to determine whether he was telling the truth or just imagining what he had seen. In 1914, two years after the Moore family was killed, Kelly was arrested for sending obscene material through the mail. Investigators suspected that he might have been responsible for the family's deaths, and he was sent to a mental hospital. In 1917, Kelly was arrested for the Velisca murders. During questioning, he confessed. However, he later retracted his confession and was eventually acquitted in two separate trials. Frank F. Jones was a resident of Velisca, Iowa, and a state senator. Josiah Moore worked for Frank Jones at his implement store for many years before leaving to open his own store. Moore is said to have taken business away from Jones, including a very successful John Deere dealership. Moore is also rumored to have had a sexual affair with Jones' daughter-in-law. However, no evidence supports this claim. Some people believe that Senator Jones hired someone to kill the Moore family. There are several possible explanations for this, but no one knows for sure which one is true. Nine months before the murders at Velisca, there were two axe murder cases in Colorado Springs, Colorado. The cases were similar enough to raise the possibility that they were committed by the same person. Other murders reported as possibly being linked to these crimes include the numerous unsolved axe murders that have been happening along the Southern Pacific Railroad over the past few years, as well as the axemen of New Orleans killings. The murders in Colorado Springs were similar in execution to the murders in the Moore House. H.C. Wayne, his wife and child, and Mrs. A.J. Burnham were all found dead, murdered with an axe. Bed sheets were used to cover the windows at the Moore House to prevent passersby from seeing in. The murderer in Colorado Springs also wiped the blood off his axe and covered the heads of the victims with bed clothes like he did in the Moore House. Mansfield is a person who has been suspected of being a serial killer. There are reports that suggest that he may have been responsible for a number of murders, including the axe murders of his wife, infant child, father-in-law, and mother-in-law in Blue Island, Illinois, the axe murders committed in Paola, Kansas, for days before the Velisca murders, and the murder of Jenny Peterson and Jenny Miller in Aurora, Illinois. Wilkerson believes that the same person killed all of the people who were killed in the same way, and he thinks that this person is Mansfield, who is known to have been in prison at the time of the murders. He believes that the murderer covered up the mirrors in the victim's homes, left a burning lamp near the bed, and washed in a basin in the kitchen. Because Mansfield knew his fingerprints would be on file at the military prison, Wilkerson believes that he was the one who committed the murders. Wilkerson convinced a grand jury to open an investigation into the Velisca murders in 1916. Mansfield was arrested and brought to Montgomery County from Kansas City, but payroll records provided an alibi that placed him in Illinois at the time of the murders. He was released for a lack of evidence and later won a lawsuit he brought against Wilkerson. Wilkerson believed that pressure from Jones resulted not only in Mansfield's release but also in the subsequent arrest and trial of Reverend Kelly. There are several people who could have killed the Moore family, but one of them is the man who was seen boarding a train in Clorinda the morning after the murders. This man says he had walked from Velisca, which means that he couldn't have committed the murders. Furthermore, someone reported that a Mrs. Vena Tompkins was on her way to testify that she heard three men in the woods planning the murders a short time before the killings. If this evidence is true, it would disprove Mansfield's alibi. At the inquest, it was found that Sam Moyer had a good alibi for the night Josiah Moore was killed. This means that he could not have been responsible for the crime. In their 2017 book The Man from the Train, Bill James and his daughter Rachel McCarthy James discuss a series of murders which they believe were all committed by a single serial killer. They believe this killer was Paul Mueller, or Miller, an immigrant from Germany who was the subject of an unsuccessful year-long manhunt as the sole suspect in the 1897 murder of a family in West Brookfield, Massachusetts. James started to research the Velisca murders because he wanted to solve the case. He found newspaper articles that detailed dozens of other families who had been killed under similar circumstances across the United States. 
The Jameses believed that Mueller was responsible for the Velisca murders, along with a killing spree that lasted over a decade. The Jameses say that the crimes at Velisca share many similarities with the crimes that Mueller was involved in elsewhere. The killer chose families who lived near railroad tracks, which is why they were suspected of revealing in the first place. They killed these people while they were asleep, using a blunt object to hit them in the head and face. The killer left an axe at the scene of the crime, and it was found at the family's home. He also covered the victims with blankets to prevent blood spatter. The killer locked the doors before leaving. In Mueller's crimes, there was often a sexual motive, as with the case of Lena. The James family may have solved the Velisca murders. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and press the bell icon to get new video updates.